The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 762, with some exceptions. Saffron Sunflower shook her head. Try to hike in those mountains would be a fool's errand, and how would you even decide when to turn back? Yeah, but hypothetically, if we really wanted to go, the late tapped her hoofs together, I guess someone would have tried it and found out for sure it was impossible. Are you saying everyone who has kicked a bucket or that nobody tried in the first place? What even makes you think walking the mountains would be more successful than flying, Pierre queried. You have wings, do you not? And an airship? Where would the mountain's magic care whether your hooves left the ground? Valet shrugged, slowing down. I don't know. In answer to your question, no one's fool enough to try it, Saffron said. Even just scaling the initial wall is a fool's errand when a storm can come down halfway up and blow you away. And that first step technically is possible. Grand Bell has a gondola that'll get you up to the pass if you have a writ to get you through, but it isn't for tourists. What about Sosa the Explorer, Starlight asked, sitting beside Valet's chair. He went up there. Everyone blinked at her. Ah, shucks, you know about him? Saffron's ears fell. Diego chuckled. They are from Iron Ridge, after all. Shill giggled, and Saffron blushed, embarrassed. Right, must have slipped my mind. She shook her head violently. So as I traveled the mountains 800 years ago. He was a unicorn from Yukakistan who was downright obsessed with them, always having crazy ideas. Most people just think he thought they were pretty. He definitely thought there would be something special about the halfway point between Infinite Glacier and Grand Bell here, and whether there was or wasn't, that's where he found the Iron Ridge. His cartography was startlingly exact too, she added with a murmur. Iron Ridge is surrounded by wilderness and would have been even more remote then. He had no modern technology at all, but by the best possible measurements we can make today, the true halfway point is within a mile of the city's crater. Sosa might have been eccentric, but he was either lucky beyond belief, or knew something no one else has discovered for 800 years. Starlight bit her lip, and Valet glanced at her, certain both of them were thinking of Iron Ridge's Crystal Palace. She'll blinked. Did I say something? Uh, yeah, just thinking. Uh, Valet shook her head. Nah, we're good, just thinking. You all are being pretty cool to us, so maybe we should invite you to drop our ship sometime? We could use more visitors who aren't sphinxes coming to mess with us. <laughs> that is not what you were thinking, Sugarcube, Saffron chuckled. I know the look of someone who knows something and isn't sure whether to say it. And everyone knows something majorly magical went down in Iron Ridge that you all were a part of. For all I know, it could be related to whatever Sosa saw in the place. But sure! I love hearing rare things and buried tales few others are in on. It's part of the lure of adventuring for me. I would not mind dropping by your ship as well, Pierre mused. In fact, if you were interested, it could even be quite profitable. Word of your restaurant and stormhoof reached my ears, and if you are thinking of expanding your business here, I have a set of skills that may be worth your while to hire. Valet pursed her lips. Ha! Huh, that might be a good idea. I don't know if we're doing that yet, but yeah, you're welcome to drop by. Sounds like you're ready to be somewhere else, Saffron remarked with a smirk. We'll see you around, I hope. Headed back to your ship for the night? Or are you going to see what Grandpapa wanted? Valet's ears fell. Oh yeah, right, yeah. It's really best if I go figure out what he wants with me before he gets in my face about it again. Or my friends' faces. She glanced at a table where Shine Spark was diligently poring over the tournament diagrams, head held in thought. See you later, I guess? See you! Saffron and Randorf sent her off of a rousing cheer, with polite waves from Shell and Pierre, and a salute from Diego. As Valet stepped through the slightly emptier room, fighters trickling out as the night grew later, Amber and Starlight stepped up by her side. Looks like most of our friends have left, Amber remarked, nodding at the door. Probably gone to figure out where Gerardo left our ship. I have the soundstone so we can stay in touch. She tossed the crystal, lodging it safely in her mane. They seem really friendly. Billy nodded, scanning the room for Grandpapa and detecting him in a distant corner. Yeah, 
Especially when two of them are dudes I just beat. I kind of want to spar with Saffron to be sure, but I think they're legit and just are here because they really like fighting. About time we made some more normal friends, right? Amber nudged her with a grin, careful to avoid any of her lingering woes. Anyway, want us along to talk to the old coot? You're probably really tired of elderly bad ponies after dealing with Chauncey. Uh, the lace smile returned. You know what? That would be pretty cool. Bring it, old coot! Hello there, children, Grandpapa greeted as the trio drew closer. I was almost afraid he would try to avoid me. How are you finding this effort to save our tournament? Ah, hi, Valet blinked. I mean, it's cool, but is there any particular reason you're being friendly all of a sudden? Oh, I've always acted in your best interests, Grandpapa hummed. But for today, at least, you're on a good path. Valet moved a hoof forward. Look, dude, you're cryptic, and I get that you enjoy doing that, but if you want something from me, you gotta straight up say it. No riddles, no jokes. What are you after? Well, Grandpapa shrugged. If I could have truly anything, I would like to see Cerosians treated as equals with the rest of the Empire. But that's a tall order, isn't it? Valet raised an eyebrow. So the best way to do that is to monk me in Stormhoof and then chop my friends up in the tournament? Grandpapa returned the expression, and his eyebrow was hairier. What good were you ever going to do us all fighting out there to become the champion? I don't know, Vully frowned. I wasn't really trying to do anything. I just entered for my friends. Mm-hmm, Grandpapa insisted, skeptical. Firstly, you were entering in the first place. Rising in the tournament draws eyes, and I had heard what you were like in Ironridge. You are hardly a poster child for a benevolent Cerosian race. Second, you had that pendant around your neck, filled with obsidian. Not a good statement to be making. Lastly, you are entering with a regent, which is a little philosophical peeve of mine. Regents pass judgment on your defeated enemies. That is the job of a god, and Garshiva puts them there to watch mortals like us flail around with that responsibility. And I have seen all too well what happens when Cerosians think they know better than gods. Amber blinked. Are you talking about you-know-who and his Valdi? Mm-hmm. Valé squinted. You knew him? Better than you think. Grandpapa smirked regretfully. We knew each other in Mistvale, but went our separate ways decades ago. It didn't stop me from seeing what he became. So what? Valé tilted her head. Chelsea was a punk, but what did he have to do with me? Why would you monk me when we had barely even met and wrecked Shyspark in her armor? Grandpapa shrugged. Because the tournament is a waste of your time. It is for show-offs and entertainers. The Griffin Empire doesn't need Cerosians being that way in the public eye. If you stayed like you were in Ironridge, you would reflect poorly upon our entire race, and if you had changed, there are much better ways to help than destroying others in front of an audience. Amber nodded skeptically. And cheating to get Valet out of the tournament is a real great way to reflect shiningly on Bad Ponies yourself, isn't it? I worked for Gyre, Grandpapa apologized. Everyone already knew nothing good comes out of Gyre. Valet furrowed her brow. And you couldn't have bucked that trend? What do you want me to be a good role model or avoid being a bad one if you're a cheater yourself? Because you're more charismatic than I am, Grandpapa replied, not missing a beat. Ah, right. Valet shifted her eyes. So, where do things stand now, Amber pressed? If Valet stays in the tournament, are you going to keep harassing her and trying to get her out? Oh, no. Grandpapa shook his head. That would be a waste of time when she has already proven undaunted. There's nothing I can do to see her removed, and I wouldn't sabotage everyone else and what they're fighting for. Valet huffed. I feel so special. Well, you are something else, Grandpapa admitted. 
Instead, I'd like to talk and take a risk that you will act in good faith. You seem different from the Valet of Ironridge. May we find somewhere more private? Valet rolled her eyes. Yeah, let's talk now instead of trying that before attacking me. Great idea. Better late than never. Your sarcasm is noted, Grandpapa evilly replied. But I don't believe you would trust words to work with someone of your high-rich reputation either. Now, there should be plenty of space somewhere over here. End of chapter 762